Hi everyone and welcome to October. In this video I'm going to be painting up a death dread which was voted by some of my Instagram followers over on obviously my Instagram account. So let's dive into it. year again where orc players everywhere bring out their orkiest projects and get to building or painting and it's time for all those space moon players to hide away and just get annoyed at all the orkness. So as I just said the model that I'm painting today was voted for by my followers over on Instagram. If you'd like to be part of future voting things then make sure to go follow me on Instagram there's a link in the description below. Uh, they were given the option between the Death Dread and one of the vehicles from the Speed Freaks box. And the Death Dread actually won by quite a lot. It was something like 10 to 1. Uh, yeah, no, the car wasn't very popular. Now, before anybody says anything, I know that some of you are going to be a bit annoyed that I'm going back to Orc videos. I do do many Orc videos. Um, well, I would just like to say I'm only doing two Orktober videos, okay? There are going to be other things as well. We're going to have this one and then another one in a couple of weeks. And in between, in between those two videos, there should be an Equon thing, hopefully, depending on if I can get it done. Now, enough of all that, let's, let's dive into the painting. So looking at this model, you can see it's pretty beaten up, it's pretty scrappy, it looks like it is just a load of scrap metal thrown at each other and spiky bits added to it by some orcs. And that's exactly what it looks like. It's just it's just a crap like pile walking. So that is what I wanted to lean into with the paint job. I'm going to be painting this Death Dread in the scheme that the rest of my Orc Army is painted in, and that is orange, purple, and green. Obviously, we're going to be taking away the green in this one because there's no skin. As purple is going to be the most dominant colour on this particular model, we're going to start with that. And I'm going to be painting it the same way that I've recently gotten into painting vehicles. Now I use this method on both my Burner Bomber and whatever this tank is called. Um, yeah, some the, a tank that I painted for my Dark Angels recently. And the method is to prime the model entirely black. We're not going to be relying on any uh, zenithal highlighting, which is what I've become fairly reliant on. Instead, we're going to lean into the black and using it for some really dark recesses. Now the way we're going to apply the paint is I'm going to start by mixing a purple with a black, uh, my normal base purple, Phonician purple, and then we're going to get a rather large brush. I'm going to be using my large dry brush. You want to work it into the bristles and then just get a little bit off. It's nowhere near getting the amount off the wood for dry brushing. You still want it to be fairly wet, but you don't want it to be so that when you touch the miniature, you're going to be leaving a thick layer on it. You know, you want it to be fairly thin. Once you've got the right amount on your brush, we're just going to stipple it everywhere. That's right, we're going to be using a very stabby motion. And this is to create a texture. One of chipped paint. One of different layers. A texture that conveys the message that this vehicle has seen some stuff. Some of the paint has become a lot more grim than the rest. Once you've done that, I'm going to move on to Phonician Purple without any black in it. I'm going to do it again, but this time we're not going to focus too hard on the recesses and stuff. We're going to start allowing the black and the black and purple to create shadows in those areas. We're going to start drawing back, going on to the more exposed parts of the model. Now you want to make sure that you're not getting a really even coverage. You don't want it to be so that we're covering up the previous layer entirely. We want it to be patchy and we want to have that texture. Now we're going to repeat this process by mixing the Phonician purple with Gene Stealer purple and then applying it to even less of the model. And then lastly you want to use Gene Stealer purple just on the tippy toppy areas. All the bits that are facing the sky. As a finishing touch I'm just going to dry brush all of the purple with Gene Stealer purple just to catch the edges of everything. Now I don't know about you but I think this texture looks really great. It instantly makes it look like it's slightly worn, like this model has seen some stuff. I'm going to be using the same technique when it comes to the oranges later. I'm not going to talk through all the colours and stuff. Just know that I'm doing the exact same thing with the stippling from a dark to light colour. 
Now this model is covered in scratches and bullet holes and little divots. So it, it seems to have quite a bit of battle damage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna emphasize all these areas and add some of our own. To do this, I'm gonna take rhinoxide or just any old dark brown and I'm going to start lightly painting on some scratches around all the pre-molded areas and on the edges of some other bits. We're going to be focusing on the edges in particular because those are the parts that will actually catch in an environment. If you're walking about and you bump into something, it will be the edge of you. It will be your arm. It's not going to be your belly button. Now you want to apply this paint sparingly. You don't want it to be all around like a really even perimeter because that's just unrealistic. You want it to be a bit more random here and there. Ultimately, this is one of those things where less is more. You don't want to overdo it. You've got to be really careful not to overdo it. But you want these areas to equally be quite noticeable. Eh, it's a tricky thing to do. Just, just go and have a go. You know, see how it turns out. Okay, so you've applied all your brown paint and you're thinking, eh, it looks all right. But they're kind of missable. Because of how dark it is and how dark the uh, purple is, it doesn't really work. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our highlight colour, which was the Gene Stealer Purple. And I'm talking about the highlighter, uh, the highlighter, and I'm talking about the highlight colour for the previous colour. So not the brown, but the armour that we're doing it on. We're going to use that purple to trace some of the edges of the brown areas we just painted on. Why are we doing this? Well, if you peel up some of the paint, it'll be some fresh paint exposed at the edge. So it would naturally be a bit lighter. Also, it really helps to draw attention to these scratches that we've just applied. Because like I said, they're quite dark, they're quite missable. If you create quite a contrast between the edge of the paint and the scratch, uh, the screech. <laughs> if you create some contrast between the edge of the paint and the scratch, then it's going to draw your eye more. To further this, on the slightly larger areas you may have painted, so like if you've done a really big blob of brown, I'm going to use a metallic paint, in this case just lead belcher, and paint little dots on the inside of the brown paint. And that is to make it look as if though they have scratched deep enough on the armour that you are now just getting raw exposed metal. Not only does this look cool, but it also helps draw the eye again, because you're getting these light patches in the dark. As a final touch to help with these scratches, particularly the pre-moulded ones, we're going to be doing a bit of panel lining. And this is where we apply a wash or a dark paint into recesses that separate areas, such as the lines on panels of armour. And the main reason for doing this is not only does it up the contrast, but it really helps your eyes differentiate between areas on the model. And it just makes it look a lot more dramatic doing it like that. So not only are we going to be doing this around all the panels and stuff on the arms, but we're also going to be applying it into any pre-moulded dinks and scrapes and rivets and stuff, like the little crosses on the shoulder pad and any bullet holes. As a final touch for this purple armour, I'm going to mix the Gene Stealer purple with a white, get about a 50-50 mix, and I'm just going to go around doing some selective edge highlighting. I'm not going to do all of it because I think it looks a bit unrealistic when the whole model is edge highlighted. Some areas simply won't be caught by the light in that way. So I'm focusing mainly on the upper facing areas and I'm not going to be doing it all the way around an area, mainly the corners and stuff. Now this is a lot of effort by my standards. I am more into the speed painting kind of thing, but I must say doing all this weathering is extremely satisfying and I am having great fun with this model. So I'm going to go ahead and do this to the rest of the model, but I must admit, I get a bit lazy. I don't uh, paint all the brown on by hand. Instead, I just apply it with a sponge, which is a lot quicker and potentially a bit more organic because you're not choosing where the marks goes. It's a bit more random in its application. So you could always do it that way. It's a lot easier. And then you just have to go around highlighting and adding the metallics here and there. After that, I go around applying the metallic paints, which is going to be a silver and a brass, because I don't want it to just be flat silver everywhere. I want to add a bit of brass to add a bit of visual interest. It can be a bit boring if it's all one type of metallic paint. And then I'm just going to wash all of that with a brown wash. 
not only does it make it look dirty like it should for this kind of model, but it also helps tie it all together and make it look like it exists in the same place. After that, all that needs to be done is to paint the horns, some little wires and lenses and stuff, and then finish off the base. And that's it. It's done. I'm a big fan. I'm instantly wanting to buy a couple more because it was genuinely a joy to paint. And how who who could have too many of those things in their army? I've no idea how that should play, but it would look cool. Just have a load of killer bean cans running about like. Bah! Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not going to overwhelm you guys with orc videos. I only have one more planned, and that is an orc boy painting video because uh, my. Orc Boy tutorial that I posted a few weeks ago when the Beast Snagger Box came out. At the end of that video, I said if it gets 50 likes, then I will paint all of my 50 remaining boys in one go. That video is at 48 likes currently. I think in a couple of weeks' time, it will be at 50. So I'm going to pre record that video just in case. Hopefully, next week, there'll be a Necron video coming out where I'm going to be creating my own colour scheme. The video is mainly going to be about how to create your own colour scheme. The challenge here is I need to try and get those videos made, both those videos made, this week. And that's because I've got surgery next week and I'm not going to be able to do much after that. So I want to try and get some videos made ahead of time so that you guys have something to watch. If you feel sorry for me and you don't want me to be lonely, then there are many ways you can help. You can give this video a thumbs up. You can leave a comment down below. Speaking of which, I have got a load of termagants to paint at some point. It's been a while since I did a Tyranid video, and I've had these guys that I needed to paint for a while now. So um, I would like any comments from you on how I should paint these guys. Because with my Hive Fleet, Hive Fleet Relictus, um, there's not one set colour scheme. Every unit's completely different. So how would you like to see these guys painted? Leave a comment down below. There are also links in the description below to all my social media accounts and there's also a link to my Patreon where you can give £2 a month to help support the channel. Thank you for all your support. Please share this video and subscribe and all that. And um, until next time, I will see you later.